Hi sewing enthusiasts and cosplay geeks. I'm Lady Delatoire. Welcome to my studio and welcome back to Building Steam, the channel where we talk about sewing, thumb smithing, cosplay, and all the geeky stuff. In this video, I'm going to complete my basic sewing tutorials by finally moving to the sewing machine, getting it threaded, putting the foot on the pedal, and getting that motor going. Let's get right into it. So I very much debated making this video at all. I can pretty much guarantee that not only is there a diagram with the instructions for your sewing machine, if you didn't get instructions, if you got it secondhand, you could find those instructions online, and there's probably a YouTube video that says exactly how to thread your precise machine. It might even have, you know, like someone talking with a monotone in the background, very calm, so you don't lose your shit as you're doing it, and like maybe a fern, something real pretty, I don't know. So I wondered at the utility of making this video. But I do feel like I should round out my basic sewing tutorial by moving to my machine and getting it threaded and getting it going. So we'll do that. I have a Jano Magnolia. It was a gift from my aunt when she was upgrading her machine. She sent me her, her old one. So that upgraded me as well, which was great. Uh, it is a digital machine. So um, a lot of you, if you're starting out with a basic machine, are going to have dials to do some of the things that I do digitally on mine. Most sewing machines have a foot pedal, like so. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my machine on. Okay. So looking at my machine here, I have this digital display here. It starts off by showing the number of the stitch that I um, would be doing. And I can press this button here to change all different things. But first, we're gonna start by threading the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and put my glasses on so that I can see what I'm doing. So, we have the uh, thread holder here, or the thread stick, or the spool, whatever you wanna call it, the spool holder. Now this machine has a very handy picture that shows which way the spool is supposed to be threading um, with the thread coming underneath. So that's what I do. This little stopper here keeps the spool of thread from moving around. So you want to make sure not to lose that. Over here is going to be some sort of uh, device to hold the thread to maintain the tension and it's really important for it to go through that Otherwise your tension will be wonky and that is really, really a very important part of sewing. Having correct tension. I went down this crack and then up the next one and every sewing machine that I've ever worked with has had that functionality. I put the thread through the hook here. This is the lever that moves up and down with the needle. It goes back down through that crack and then there is a catch down next to the needle that I'm going to put the thread through, maybe. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Alright, got it. It's always easier to thread the needle if you have a nice clean end. And yes, I'm going to wet that down. I'm also going to take a little bit of my spit and I'm going to put it right behind the needle. And that moisture is going to simply pull the thread right through. Oh, magic. The power of spit. Gross. All right, so that part is threaded. And, and I guess I should have done the bobbin thread first. I do this every single time. I do this to myself. I do this while I'm sewing. I sit down at the sewing machine and I thread the whole thing and then I go, I did not thread the bobbin. And then I have to take it all apart and redo it. So at least I'm consistent. I'm consistently teaching you how to do it wrong. So helpful. So that's okay. I'm gonna unthread all of this and talk about the bobbin thread. So when we're using a sewing machine, unlike hand sewing where we have one thread in our needle, the sewing machine has the top thread here 
and it has the bobbin thread down here. And the bobbin thread is on one of these little round bobbins, or maybe if you have an older machine, it is a metal bobbin. And the bobbin case is either going to be sitting, it's gonna be a drop-in case like this, or there will be one on the front. My first Singer had a door that flipped open here on the front, and it went in that way. The drop-in bobbin is way easier, I'm just saying. Most machines nowadays have a bobbin winder, and hopefully the bobbin winder on your machine works. You can also buy little bobbin winders that's like a separate machine if you have an older machine that does not do that or it does not work. And the plastic bobbin has a little hole. I don't know if you can see it at the top. It has a little hole. And I'm going to thread through there. No. I pop it on the bobbin winder, doink, push it to the side, see, it goes this way. If it's like this, then this is not, it's not turned on. Once I do this, now the foot pedal is going to activate the bobbin winder instead of the sewing machine. I'm going to hold this up out of the way. I don't want it to get involved in this, I want it to be held up out of the way. So I'm going to push the pedal with my foot, and that would take forever, so I'm going to make it be faster. Okay. I'm not going to do the whole bobbin because I don't need to, but now this piece here, I want to trim pretty close. I want to drop my bobbin in so that the thread is on the left side here coming around. And usually there will be a picture somewhere on your machine. My picture is on the, the lid to my bobbin holder here. so. I'm going to drop this down, and again, different sewing machines have different procedures. I'm just making sure it pulls in through the slot, and then I pull it to the back. I put the lid on top, and I re-thread my machine because I'm a big dummy, and I should have done that first. All right, so I need to make sure that my bobbin thread is going to pull up through the little hole that is on the sewing machine right here. And the way that I do that is I hold on to the top thread here, the one that's coming out of the needle. I take my hand on the wheel on the side of the machine and I go down and the thread picks up the bottom thread and pulls it through and I use usually my scissors to pull that thread through the hole. And now I'm perfectly threaded with the bobbin thread coming up through the hole underneath the needle and the top thread coming through the hole on the needle and then they can work together. Okay, so let's talk tension. On every machine that I've seen, it has a wheel of some kind on this side of the machine, on the needle side of the machine, where the tension is here, held here. And it has numbers on it. Mine goes from one to nine. And you usually have it set around three, four, five. Um, depending on the thickness of your fabric, you may need to go lower or higher to create that perfect pull. I want you to imagine that the top thread and the bottom thread are like two people playing tug of war. And we actually want no one to win the tug of war. We want it to be perfectly evenly matched. So I only have top thread on the top and I only see bobbin thread on the bottom. I don't see that top thread starting to pull through. Usually it happens to me where the top thread starts to pull through on the bottom. I don't usually get the bobbin thread to the top. If you think your stitches look funky, then you can play with it a little bit up and down and see where that takes it. Um, but it is very important to have good tension. So you will have a dial or a choice for stitch selection. When you first start out, you are going to mostly be using the straight stitch, which is usually one. And maybe you'll be using a zigzag stitch. Um, for me, that's eight. That's the one that goes like this. 
You will also have a selector for the width of the stitch. Now with a straight stitch, that really doesn't apply. The width of the stitch means if I'm doing a zigzag, I can do a really big zigzag or I can do a little tiny zigzag. And the width of the stitch is going to set that. It also, using the stitch width, can move. it moves the needle from the left to the right. So you can also position your needle off center with that. My machine automatically defaults when I turn it on to straight stitch right in the center. Um, so I usually don't do a whole lot with the stitch width selector. Um, the next selection that you have to make is how your stitch length selector. How long do I want that stitch to be? Uh, my machine defaults when I turn it on to 2.2, which is a little tiny stitch. I usually put it up to 2.4 or 2.6 if I'm doing a regular stitch because that's a little easier to get out when I mess up. And I mess up a lot. If I want a longer stitch, I keep going up. 3, I often use for edge stitching. 3.5, 4, top stitching. And it goes all the way to 5 for my long machine basting stitch. So I do use different lengths of stitch all the time. I'm usually in this, have it set so that I am playing with the length of my stitch. On the side of the machine, there is a wheel that allows you to manually make the needle go up and down. And you will use that as you are sewing and just to position the needle to get started. So this is the base plate of the sewing machine. It has different lines on it that will show you the different size of seams that you can go to. So usually that's 5 eighths of an inch on the commercial patterns. This machine has lines all the way out to 2 and 3 eighths of an inch uh, for doing quilting and things like that. So I am going to go ahead. There is a lever right here. That lever obviously moves the foot up and down. Now the foot is on this post here. Depending on what kind of sewing you're doing, the foot can be all sorts of different shapes. There are feet to do buttonholes. There are feet to do zippers. There are feet to do just about anything. This is a standard, actually this is a zigzag foot. So it has enough space for it to do a zigzag as well as a straight stitch. This is the basic foot that I use for most of my sewing. So I have my fabric. I picked out a fabric that had very clear sides, right side and wrong side, the front of the fabric and the back of the fabric. Most patterns will say to you when you go to start sewing your seam, they'll say put your fabric right sides together. So I'm going to take the front of the fabric pieces and place them next to each other. Putting my raw edges together, this is my raw edge here, and I pin it to hold it together as I am sewing it through the machine. I'm going to take my raw edge and I'm going to line it up with the line that says 5 eighths of an inch right underneath my needle. I drop my lever down and I'm ready to start. I press down gently on the foot pedal and I sew just a few stitches. There is a button on the front of my machine. My first machine, it was more of like a lever that allows me to reverse my stitch. I'm going to push that button and go backwards, and that's going to lock my seam in place. If I was doing a basting seam, I would not lock my stitches in place. I would just go straight through, and that would allow me to easily pull the stitches out. But I'm going to pretend that I want this seam to last forever, so I locked it in place at the start. And now I'm going to go ahead sewing along, making sure that my raw edge, edge stays even with my 5 8 line. I like to pull my pins out as I go down my seam because I don't want to break my needle. So I am at the end of my seam and I'm going to hit the back button again to lock those stitches in place. And then sew right off the edge of the fabric. Lifting up my lever, I pull it out. A lot of machines have a thread cutter right here on the side. I don't use it very often. I usually use my scissors because that allows me to get right up next to it. 
and cut it off clean. I trim off my other end. And there we go. I have sewn together my seam. And since I sewed it wrong sides together, when I open it up right sides, you have a nice clean neat seam. And the actual sewing is on the inside where you wouldn't see it. So the next thing that I would have to do is I would have to press this seam open. So I'm going to run over to my uh, iron and do that real quick. So I have pressed open my seam nice and neat here. And that might seem like that's the end of the story and you can just move on to the next step. And if you're looking at your pattern, it will often seem like that because the pattern will not tell you to finish your seam generally. And when I first started sewing, I didn't understand that I was, in fact, supposed to be finishing my seams. And I was a little confused. Uh, what that means is, if I have this raw edge here, it will continue to fray and pull and really look quite messy and nasty. And there are certainly a lot of fancy finishes that you can look up and practice. But uh, just a couple basic ones. Um, you can use pinking shears to cut along the seam line, which creates a zigzag cut. Uh, you can use a zigzag stitch along your seam allowance. So I set a nice long big zigzag. And I'm going to go right along the seam line here with my zigzag. And then I could just trim to the edge of the zigzag, being careful not to cut the zigzag itself. I don't love that. I think it still looks messy. So what I would often do is I would take this seam allowance and fold it in upon itself and place that underneath the foot so I don't want to put any of my um, outside of my fabric underneath the foot. I just want to sew the seam allowance to itself so that the raw edge is underneath, hidden underneath the seam. And I just use a regular straight stitch to do that. And then my raw edge is hidden and my seam is a lot neater. Now if you are doing something with lining, you don't have to finish your seams because they're going to be hidden underneath the lining. But it is important if you are doing something where the seams are visible when it is turned inside out, that you finish your seams. So there you have it, all your sewing machine basics. I really hope that this inspires you to go ahead and get started making that garment or that cosplay that you've always wanted to make. It just takes practice and perseverance. Stick to it and don't give up. Although I will certainly be doing more tutorial style videos in the future, I do also want to start talking about my sewing for cosplay. You can see right behind me, that guy right there, Victorian lab coat that I was commissioned by a friend to make and I'm just waiting on the buttons for that to come and I can get that finished up and sent out. And then I can get started working on my next cosplay. Now if you've been subscribed to this channel and you watched my husband's video on the grifter build diary, you'll know that he made a really really cool grifter mask. But he happened to make the joke Grifter has a girlfriend named Zealot and that I should make her costume. And he really should be careful about making those kinds of statements because now he's going to have to make me a whole bunch of swords because, yeah, you see that? She's cool. <laughs> so I definitely want to, that's going to be my next work in progress. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button so you get notified when new content comes out. We are trying to release new content every week. As always, happy making, and I'll catch you next time.